Cheers, guys. Cheers. <laughs> oh, got the monster at the, the movie podium. Koozie there. The monster. Ooh. <laughs> nice. Hey, guys. How's it going? What's up? It's pretty nice. excited uh, for us. Yeah, I'm very excited for this one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is, this is going to be a little different. Uh, we only have three tonight. And um, welcome to the movie podium. Superman kind of came to mind, and so we decided to choose the Superman from 1978. What are you guys' uh, thoughts on this? I know, John, you were a big Superman fan, or at least the movie version when we were growing up. Oh, yeah. When you suggested we do this, I struck on it like a big mouth bass. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Sold. <laughs> Where yeah, was I? Yeah, I actually didn't see this movie until uh, I started getting Netflix, the DVD packages sent to oh, my wow. house. Um, so I didn't grow up with this movie, but when I first saw it, it still struck a chord with me, and I just I fell in love with it. Yeah, surprisingly, this is the first time I've actually watched this, which. I mean, I've seen a lot of movies from 1978, and somehow this was not one of them. It's just You've kind of... You've seen a lot of movies from 1978? <laughs> well, I mean, I was looking at the list of, you know, does this podium, and thinking, well, this would be an obvious choice. But then I, I mean, I actually had to look at it, and I was like, oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. And mm -hmm. so I, I'd seen more than I had expected. But somehow I always avoided this somewhat on purpose not because i didn't want to see it but it was just like one of those movies that always sits above your head and you're always like well i could go to that one eventually and that was right. yeah it's always list, there you know yeah it's always there and eventually you'll get to it it's like the sopranos i've never watched the sopranos i'm like all right is this the time and then i never end up doing it but i'm like I, I want to digest it. I want to get into it. And I was like, all right, it's time. Right. Well, I cannot wait. This um, That score that we just heard was from John Williams himself, not Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's John get John Williams, the GOAT, man. Oh, he might be the GOAT. I mean, he, I mean his all-time list is just absurd, right? Yeah, it's like his podium is one of the toughest podiums to yeah. do I, for like anyone in show business. I agree. Like, I I don't know. Yeah, I I struggle. Like I feel like it's one of those recency biases where I'm like, all right, if I listen to another one of his soundtrack, that's my favorite, and then I'm gonna go to another one. And I'm like, oh. Yeah, duh, Indiana Jones. Like, <laughs> like right. dude, he killed oh, it Jaws. again. Like, <laughs> right, I'm like, oh, that's the best. Oh, so there's definitely <laughs> some recency bias with him because he's so damn good. Yeah, he's just amazing. It's just like the last thing you listen to from him is just going to be your favorite because <laughs> yeah. it's so good on every yeah. level. It, re it really is. So he does it again. I'm going to get into some random ass facts. Do bang. <laughs> There's too many, honestly, based on the lore and the age of the movie. Just naturally, things build over time. People type stuff up, and it's obviously such a mainstream and iconic movie that there's so many things that I, I found, and I'm just like, oh, I, I, I had the nitpick on which ones I, I wanted to share with you guys. Right. You had to curate your list because there was so much stuff out there. By far. I mean, yeah, we could do a whole podcast on Did You Know? Yeah, Superman. it opens yeah. with like Superman in like the 30s or something. Like, yeah. Superman's been around. <laughs> a lot yeah. to pare down. Uh, Well, for sure. And in this movie, there's just a ton of lore and a ton oh, of yeah. Trivia. References. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, Definitely. So this movie got in 7.4 on IMDb. Is that higher than Thor? It is higher than Thor. <laughs> the, the, really the OG 
super book or superhero movie or comic book movie. I mean, we had the 65, 66 Batman. Tell me, Commissioner, what known super criminals are at large just now? But like, this is just a different type of movie, right? I like to say this is the first modern superhero movie. Yeah, I would agree with that. And so, like, even it's though still it's higher still, than Thor. <laughs> yeah. Even though it's still like a classic movie of its time, it's still like the first one that has a lot of modern filmmaking sen- sensibilities in it. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And at the time, the special effects were really impressive. They. Even though obviously we look at it back or look back at it now and it's like, okay, that's kind of corny, obviously. But back then they had spent like an entire year on their graphics and just this was top notch at the time. Crazy enough. Yeah. They they were actually so Superman was up for three Oscars, obviously including best original score. Somehow didn't win. I feel like this is a level two Oscar tragedy. You know, not like, so like level one's like Bill Murray and Lost in Translation. So this mm-hmm. is probably like a two. This, this soundtrack is just rules. Right. Well, and John Williams, he got his. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's not like he never got his. So it's, it's a no, level two. no. It's, yeah, that's fair. It might get de- downgraded to a level three based on you know <laughs> he's got the the hardware. The at the time it was level two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like wait yeah. a minute. Come on, this guy's a genius, and we're giving it to Joe Schmo. Come on. I don't know who actually won. It's probably somebody else. I wonder this. if at that time they're like, he'll get one. <laughs> Let's get this guy. <laughs> yeah. <done." laughs> well, so 78 would have been after Star Wars. So this was a year after Star Wars. Yeah, right. 77. So, yeah. So I don't know. Did I would assume best. Did John Williams win best score in, in Star Wars? I don't think so. I don't think it was up for it. So, so this was after A New Hope and before uh, Empire? Empire. Yep, this is right between. And you can see the influence that the Star Wars movie had on this too. I know it's only a year, so I mean, some of this was in production, but they were all on the same page in the in the sci fi world around this time. Yeah, like the top ones. I mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I noticed a lot of the they used uh, models a lot like Star Wars. It yeah, must, must have been a technique of the time. But I'm like, oh, oh that's definitely. a model. Yeah, Which, definitely. You know, I recognize because I'm used to today's techniques. But I thought it looked good. I yeah. like. Yeah, I like I the puppets and stuff that is you know not computer generated. Yeah, the practical Agreed. effects. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep, they were great in this. This was a Richard Donner film. So he another few notable movies from him on his greatest list. He's got Superman 2, obviously. He's got the Lethal Weapon series. He did Scrooged. And the original... Hey. Yeah, and the original Omen, which we watched a lot when we were kids. But my oh, favorite... Yeah was of his is the Goonies. Oh, nice. I didn't realize that was a Donner movie. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. He for sure has eclipsed uh, his mate Blitzen. <laughs> <laughs> and... and- uh. But wah, 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 wah. yeah, so he did do the omen right around this time as well. I think two years before this. So he's a great director, right? I mean, those yeah. are some really good movies. The Lethal Weapon movies are very beloved. I he and then he kind of stopped after that. It was and some was range too. Late. Yeah. Oh yeah, I would agree with that. With obviously Superman and Lethal Weapon. I mean, there couldn't be more. Oh, opposite. what'd you say, Daniel? Range. Range. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you have a action. I mean, you might have needed a break, too, because all of that seemed to been. be like packed into it was, a short yeah. 
him. Yeah, I mean, Superman the Lethal Weapon's only 20 years. So, like... And how many Lethal Weapons? Both four. those were multi-movie I, franchises. Yeah, right. So, like, yeah, this guy had a busy 20 years and seemed like <laughs> kind of called it. So, if you thought Christopher Reeves, or Christopher Reeve was bulked up, it's because he actually tried to go through a bodybuilding regimen. Now, he is 6'4", and he's slender. He's not as bulky as what we're used to now, but apparently... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And so apparently he did have a bodybuilding regimen. Anyone want to take a wild guess on his trainer? And I'll give you a hint. It has to do with movies where a guy also would need to get big for a role in that same era. <laughs> was it Stallone? Close. I'm think I was thinking Lou Ferrigno, but he wouldn't be the trainer. He'd be trying to get big. Yeah, I think this is tough, but it's pretty hilarious once you hear who it is. So David Prowse, who was the original Darth Vader. Yeah. Was oh, a big yeah. guy. Obviously played a you know, a caped mask in this case villain, but at the time, that was only a year prior, so these have a lot of intertwining, and that was one of them. That Darth Vader. So he was trained, trained by the man in the Darth Vader suit. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And, isn't that crazy? Yeah. That's first, I world. thought you meant they had the same trainer, but no, 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 no. no. Darth yeah. Vader trained him. Darth Vader <laughs> trained Superman. Ultimate bad guy <laughs> training the ultimate good guy. Yeah. <laughs> That's isn't that hilarious? Yeah. That is pretty, pretty, uh, pretty. Again, there's a million worth. of these. I was like, oh, that one we got to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. That's gotta hilarious. Touch on that one. Um, Mario Puzo helped write this. Did that, write, that name rang a bell for you guys at all? Yeah, because Lou Ferrigno's in one of those movies. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. Yeah, but he, so yeah, he wrote The Godfather, which is. Oh. Crazy that he wrote The Godfather, which there's your uh, Marlon Brando tie. Yeah. But you had The Godfather, Hello. and then you had <laughs> yeah. Superman. Like, crazy. These, Lots these, of multi-talented some, dudes. I know, that's what... This. Absolutely, I was about to just say that. This was a very talented group, and it's really, you can tell. So even though Marlon Brando isn't in there a ton, he's obviously Superman's dad, Jor-El. He was, at the time, the highest paid actor for any role as the dad in Superman. The story goes that he didn't memorize a single word in this movie, and everything's <laughs> written all around, and they asked him why, and obviously, you know, the assumption is he's lazy. Like, who wants to memorize lines? <laughs> Even though he's getting paid more than anybody. He thought the only way for it to sound original is if he was reading them for the first time <laughs> all the days of your life you will make my strength your own so hmm. everything is as he's reading it you're hearing it for the first time and it's like wait a minute that means you're not practicing any of this or like it's just he's just winging it the whole time <laughs> yeah i mean some dudes thrive under pressure like that and to he me did it a pretty makes good it job Oh, yeah. Yeah. It would make sense oh, yeah. if you're just like, you know. I got to record this for my kid who I'm, you know, sending off the planet real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. No, I think he does great. I mean, I, you wouldn't know that. So let's see. We've got, does anybody want to take a guess? This is kind of a, a trivia question. And I didn't really put it together. And maybe it's because I've only seen it now once. But does anybody know how old Clark Kent is supposed to be? When he's in Metropolis. 32. Close. Very close. I would have said younger. Like mid-20s. <laughs> 30. So, 30. He spent 12 years at the Fortress of Solitude. Oh, okay. Learning all the, all the Krypton's knowledge or Krypton's knowledge. 12 years. <laughs> that was like med school up there. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, down there. Antarctica. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
That's what I call exactly wrong. (laughs) (laughs) You guys ready to get into the questions? Yes, sir. All right, let's do it. So first question we've got, favorite thing about the movie? All right, John, why don't you go first, Mr. Superman? Superman's backstory, I thought, just really greatly set up. The whole, basically, he's got the Krypton backstory and the Kansas backstory. And then the Fortress of Solitude bit, but I just thought it was, you know, perfectly done. Yeah, Yeah, and go ahead. Uh, I was just going to jump on that a little bit and say, like, the fact that they focus as much as they do on the Smallville part of his life is so important because that so informs who Superman actually is. The backbone. I like that answer a lot because, yeah, it kind of gives you his makeup for the, the rest of the movie. And you see those reflections from some of the scenes or actions he decides and chooses a lot of that is oh he got that from his kansas family or oh he's a super being yeah it's the krypton so yeah i I like that answer it really (laughs) does give you the the backbone of of superman there so my favorite thing about the movie is that it's a simple straightforward superhero movie in the grandest way so i liked how I mean, it was kind of like watching a John Cena match. (laughs) It's not super flashy. It's kind of corny, but he's an all-American Boy Scout that's got superpowers and just going along with the simple comic book plot. Daniel? Uh, My favorite thing about this movie is that Clark Kent is absolutely perfect. Like, Christopher Reeves plays Clark Kent so perfectly as, like, He's a Dudley Do-Right. He's clumsy enough to throw off suspicion, but he's really still like just such a good person because yeah. that's who Clark is. Yeah. And like they didn't go over the top with him being a bumbling simpleton. Like, yeah, yep. Like uh, Bill and Kill Bill, you know, his monologue is like, he sees humans as stupid and weak and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, you don't get it, Bill. Right. Like, you're a moron. Yeah. That's what a sociopath would think. Like, Clark <laughs> exactly. is who he is as a person. Superman didn't become Superman. Superman was born Superman. Right. And Superman's the facade he puts on to do the right thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, 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 I totally agree with that as well. Yeah, I just liked how... You don't always need like a million storylines. You don't need the, you know, action packed. Some of the Marvel movies that are just seem over the top. This was just kind of like a comic book movie at its heart. I mean, it's silly. It's goofy. You get the corny villains. I mean, it's Uh, very corny, but (laughs) yeah, but not in like a a bad way and almost like a charming way. And it's just oh yeah, it's mainly so centered epic. around Clark, which it's yeah, I mean, he's from Kansas for crying out loud, yeah, <laughs> right, and he's a comic book character, yeah, right, and I think I think you hit the nail on the head. It's not so much corny as it is charming. It's, yeah, exactly. It's, it's a it's a very heartfelt like story of a good dude doing good mm-hmm. for goodness' sake, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's a lot to strive for as like an, an adult now. It's weird. I never liked Superman growing up because, you know, he always did the right thing and did the Boy Scout thing. And it's always cool to like Batman because he's kind of dark and, and badass. shut off and badass. <laughs> right. And does what he wants because it's vengeance or it's justification to himself. Superman mm-hmm. doesn't do that. He doesn't have the. He doesn't need to tell himself that. But as an adult, you're kind of like, oh, now I kind of get Superman more. Now I see why this is such a thing for kids, or it should be for kids. And <laughs> Sometimes Superman, it gets lost. Yeah. But Superman is one of those characters that, like, 
when you look at the world, we need more Superman. We don't need more yeah. Batman. Like absolutely. <laughs> like we need what that about more Jokers? We need that good. We need that more in the world than we need brooding, self indulgent you yeah. know vengeance. Vengeance. Exactly. <laughs> right. You're you're absolutely right. And it's funny because even the more recent Supermans, the um is it Man of Steel that came yeah. out? And he like he snaps General Zod's neck and screams and all of this, and you're like, "Do we need this?" Yeah, I mean that's kind of. I mean you're you're you nailed it. Sometimes we need to dial it down. We we just need good versus evil, and we need a big epic. I mean this is a long movie, but it doesn't feel like it. Not one time did I say, "Oh man, this dragged on." Yeah, maybe the the opening number just because it's music, but John right. Williams was good enough to kind of negate that. Right, so I and it was just once where, it was and like it was just the seventies where that's what with the style was was credits were in the beginning. So, oh yeah, oh like, yeah, I wasn't faulting it for. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's almost like an overture where they almost yeah. do the whole, you know, a mel- medley. <laughs> yeah, I mean they're probably on some pot and just wanted to stare <laughs> at the stars. You know, <laughs> we're in the planetarium, bro. Exactly. <laughs> Krypton. <laughs> right. I mean, that sounds pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> not going to lie. Other than your <laughs> fucking planet exploding. but <laughs> Well, there's that. But watching it in a planetarium. <laughs> yeah. Watching a planet explode is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's always fun. Just see Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next category, we've got least favorite part about the movie. Daniel, what was the least favorite thing for you? I had two things. Um, one was the Krypton stuff went a little long in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, but part of that was to set up the second movie. And I get Which that. I don't know about, yeah. but I kind of do because I did some research. And yeah. in that research, I kind of stumbled on a few things. So go ahead. Yeah, it's not, it's, not, it's not like big plot spoilers but it's just right. like it's just like some of that stuff is to set up superman too yeah. and it's it's a little long like i myself don't care that much about krypton or jor-el give me clark as a kid like that's what i want to see i want to see smallville yeah smallville exactly mm-hmm. i don't care about krypton that much uh and then the other thing is uh it's the cheesiest point in the movie i think is when he turns back time by flying around the earth backwards yeah so i wanted to talk about this and i knew it would come up i didn't know where but i knew someone would say it or i would bring it up but so you that's one of your least favorite things my Mm -hmm. question was going to be for me i don't hate it but i don't love it and i wanted to see what your guys thoughts you you it's one of your least favorite things it's one of my least favorite things. I don't hate it because I yeah. don't hate this movie. And sure. like, I and get anyway, right. And this was, this was back when Superman could do just whatever he wanted to do. <laughs> like in the comics, he got nerfed a lot after crisis on infinite earths, but this was before crisis on infinite earths. Right. So this was still the Superman who was throwing a mm. chain around a planet and pulling it around <laughs> the solar system and stuff like that. So, this is, un- yeah. this is untethered, <laughs> yeah, untethered, just superpowers out the butt, Superman. <laughs> so it doesn't, it doesn't kill the movie for me, but it's just like a little bit like, oh, they could have yeah. come up with a different way to have him save Lois. Yeah, so the right, I exactly. No, I agree with that, and that's why I think the scene is just meh. But I will say, in that same breath. That Superman's primal yell. <laughs> scared the shit out. I mean, that was probably one of the best or on my podium for just all time movie yells. Yeah, because like, he I didn't so see that good coming. up to that point. And then yeah. you're like, oh my God, he's, he's mad. <laughs> yeah, that primal yell is just so intense and memorable that I just 
obviously I didn't see it coming. I was like, dang, like, all right, this is cool. Like he's not harming anything, but you, there you see the dilemma in his head and what I thought she was going to die. I mean, I, I can't believe I fell for it being right. <laughs> seeing so many of these comic book movies, but I was like, <laughs> how are they going to save her? She's dead. Like they're showing her dead. I was yeah. like, Oh, he's holding her in his arms. Like eventually she's going to wake up here. And she never did. And I was like, Oh, and then he screams, and I'm like, all right, it's over. John, what was your least favorite thing about the movie? Uh, that was one of my top or bottom least favorite <laughs> things is the turning back of time. For one, just because of the physics of it. <laughs> like, oh. Yeah, jerk- so one, yeah, it may, like it turns one way instead of the other, and magically that means it. Time goes back. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't just rip off the whole crust of the earth and kill everyone. <laughs> right. Right. Just make it go the other way. But um, another reason why I didn't like it is because the whole movie were warned, you know, repeatedly, Jor-El's words, you're forbidden to interfere from human history. My son. Yeah, so you does. didn't like that. Yeah, and then right. I'm like, okay, well, what happens? Does he pay the price? Like, okay, so, right. Well, <laughs> you weren't that, allowed, but you did. So now what? <laughs> and that leads to the second movie, if I'm right. Not mistaken, right? I don't get a resolution in this movie. I know, and now I have to go watch the second one. Nice job, Dick Donner. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my least favorite thing was just some something. I mean, similar to that, but just like the unnecessary drama with like the explosion when Lois Lane is leaving the gas station during the earthquake, <laughs> and all of a sudden it just blows up, and then like she's freaking out and like just all this like okay, maybe an earthquake happens and her she's in the car and it falls in. Like okay, I get it, but just some of the like random little things. Uh, did um, I miss why Lois and Jimmy just so happened to be <laughs> at, like ground zero of this nuclear attack? Or was that just a total coincidence? I think it, they were out there looking into Luthor buying up uh, all that okay. land. Yeah, they were exactly. sort of on the beat. They were on the case because okay. she was interviewing somebody in the car and they were, yeah, going out there to investigate from what I understand. Oh, yeah, that... Indian man says, "Like I hope it's Custer for the price he paid." Yeah, exactly. Sorry, so if that's I why they were out. Line. <laughs> Definitely not nitpicking because I, I didn't hate it, but I didn't love the end or the the turn back time share style. That was it was okay. All right, next category we've got who won the movie. So I'll go first. I I said Lois and Clark as a power couple. I don't know if there's a better comic book movie couple out there, to be honest. So it's just kind of awesome how Lois is the alpha. <laughs> right? Like, that's kind of mm-hmm. cool. I, I really like their dynamic. So she's real quirky. The damsel in distress at times, but also a badass. Like in that scene where the dude that's, you know, looks like he just got out of Studio 54, tries to steal her purse, and she's standing <laughs> up there for herself. And obviously, it takes Superman to catch a bullet and faint <laughs> to yeah. uh, make them, but that's what kind of makes them a great team, right? So he kind of does some of the secret stuff, and, but she's driving the bus. And I just, like how he's this almighty human and yet his biggest struggle isn't tracking down two missiles and launching them into the sky <laughs> but it's Lois Lane dying in an earthquake Daniel who won the movie for you uh Superman Superman because they made a big budget picture for him and it was true to the character it was its own thing a little bit like the crystals in Krypton and the Fortress of Solitude, that's all from this movie. 
they've borrowed that and used it in other fiction, but that's all mm. from this movie. I did um, not know that. <clears throat> yeah, me neither. That's really cool. Yeah. So it did its own sort of stuff while staying true to the character while being a just great movie. Like it's, it's Superman. He, he won because he got, you know, and it's like Batman in the 1989 Batman when they finally get a big budget, serious take on a hero and it actually works out is great. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Amen. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think, and I mean, this was in 1978, and as you mentioned, Batman was 89, so really between then, there's nothing. So Superman was king for a long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, for an entire decade, really. So good answer. John? Very similar answer, but it's the actor, Christopher Reeve. Uh, Basically, you got to make four of these and ride the Superman wave. Mm -hmm. So more or less just by way of him being Superman, I guess he uh, basically rode on Superman's cape in that way. There were a few other people. I don't remember who, but he wasn't necessarily the first person they were going to go with, Mm -hmm. but Donner explicitly said like, I want somebody who's not already famous. I want somebody to be Superman. I don't want somebody to play Superman. And so he fell in love with Christopher Reeve for that aspect. And so he basically embodied Superman. And again, like you said, he, that is his role. Yeah, so, it's his only role, really. Re- I mean, really. <laughs> I mean, if you look it up, the only other stuff that he has is just TV movies. <laughs> TV movies and real short films or TV shows. So, yeah, this is it. And really, they were just looking for somebody to be Superman. <laughs> John Q. Everyman. And exactly. that's the thing is, he does both... because. Playing Superman is playing two roles. You're playing Mm -hmm. Clark and you're playing Superman. And Mm -hmm. he nails both of those roles, which is so important. And what so many people miss, they, when they're playing Superman, they want to be Superman. They don't want to be Clark. They think Clark is the, is the part of the role you have to play to be Superman. Where Clark is just as interesting a role to me, at least as Superman himself. So like, so like Christopher Reeve being able to play both Clark and Superman as well as he does is just amazing. It makes the movie work. Oh, absolutely. Can can I say that reminds me of a really uh, favorite part of mine that's really small and it's after Superman's date with Lois and Clark picks... Uh, her up for his date and she oh, I love it he, she goes to get freshened up or whatever um, he's dressed up as clark but while she's changing he's acting like superman yeah and like, yeah he like gets like, up r- confident because yeah. he you know just had a good date but he's dressed up as clark and i just really like that because it was like him like peak both clark and superman yeah yeah. yeah, he like well, takes the, in a deep breath and, and he all grows of a sudden two he seems inches. to grow three. Yeah, two, I know. Three inches, like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's and, so good. It's so charming. Yeah. yeah, and and like he's about to tell Lois he's Superman, and then he's oh, like, yeah. thinks better of it, and yep, he's like oh, black he's into like, got to do my duty. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's funny that you so, you guys are talking about you know how he playing two different roles kind of goes unnoticed in this case. And apparently something that Roger Moore said one time, apparently Christopher Reeve would actually go out as Superman and all the girls would swoon and follow him around. But when he would dress like Clark Kent and walk around, no one would notice him. (laughs) That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, That's amazing. (laughs) And that's, I just thought that was cool. That's why everyone who dumps on his disguise is like not really doing it right. Like, right. It's not just the glasses. 
It's the glasses. It's the way he changes his hair. It's the way he carries himself. Yeah, goofy is. Yeah, yeah. It's the way he he wears. He wears a suit that's you know one size that's too big. Like (laughs) he does. He does all these things to just to just slightly change. And that slight change, you know, you could look at the same guy and just be like, okay. You yeah. know, that's not him. It looks kind of like him, but that's not him. Yeah, so apparently that actually happened in real life. But yeah. that was funny. Let's looks do... like Clark Kent Scott just joined us. <laughs> <laughs> that's you're damn right. Yeah, these aren't real. I, was telling, I think I was telling Daniel, these are just like those like blue light glasses. Yeah, there we go. They're pretty much like that. Well, <laughs> I'm now feeling left out. <laughs> so I had to put mine on. Favorite song moment or score scene? John, what's your favorite score scene? Well, if this is a valid answer, the whole fucking thing. (laughs) In the parlance of Jake Taylor, the whole fucking thing. (laughs) Nice. Daniel? Uh, for me, it's the Superman theme. It's iconic. It fits Superman. He John Williams uses it at different tempos, which I think is brilliant. You know, sometimes it's just a. And sometimes it's yeah. bum, 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 like bum, bum. it's so it's John Williams just does a fantastic job of just he just plays with the tempo just a little bit and it creates a completely different feeling and it's amazing. I mean, John Williams is just goat. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely a, a John Williams love fest going on tonight, but I'm all for it. I'm here. I'm here for the party. I I actually said both of those. <laughs> those are my two <laughs> answers. So I said the score overall is incredible. Here's my hot take. Theme song wise, I think I like this more than the Star Wars theme. <laughs> it's a hot take. Yeah. But yeah. I really, really like the hot comp- potato, hot potato. I just like how basic it is, but I I, I just love the like that 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 mm-hmm. one part just complements the whole thing so well. It feels so epic. It feels bigger than anything. I mean, he's Superman. It has yeah. to, it has to be. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Williams. I mean, just he's he's a goat, man. He, yeah, he knows how to how to look at a situation and go like. Here's what this needs, right? And then, yeah, exactly. Put exactly that music out there for it. I have a yeah. couple other parts if I might indulge myself. Oh, please, please do. And it really fits into the whole score because he's, in my opinion, a master of like blending, you know, different elements into, you know, like the bad guy themes all into the same voice of one movie. Yeah. But a couple of my other favorite little parts in the score were uh Ned Beatty's dumb tuba theme, like <laughs> bum 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 we are yeah. bumbling around and being stupid. <laughs> um and then also um this is probably used elsewhere in the movie, but particularly when um he's finally roped into opening the lead chest with the kryptonite in it. And you get the spooky dun, 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 dun. Yeah. It's like dramatic. And it's like, Oh fuck. He's done now. <laughs> Superman might be done. I, I um, also, but everything I, he does is just so, uh, you know, emotionally invocative every yeah. every little bit of it <laughs> yeah i i also wanted to give a shout out to the flying scene and the music with that i 
I I'm not sold on her like her talking poem. over <laughs> Yeah, her narrated poem is okay. Holding hands with a god. And I, I, I'm I'm good with the whole scene. I, I actually like the scene because it's just one interview. It's a night with Superman. And so yeah, she and it's gets still the same t- it's still the same theme in like a different tone. It's you right. know all romantical. <laughs> I absolutely love that scene as a whole. Yeah, her talking is probably the, my least favorite part. <laughs> but but I and I know that some people are probably going to be like, "Well, did he actually drop her when <laughs> like on purpose or is he caught up in the moment? Like is he perfect?" Or is it because he's with Lois Lane that he gets caught at the moment and accidentally drops her? <laughs> right? Right. What, what right. do you guys think? Uh, I think Lois did it herself. She, oh. wanted to, she wanted to be snug against his chest again. Oh, yeah, there we go. The damsel in distress. I actually blame Superman. I'm like, the fuck you're going to drop her, dude? <laughs> I know. I I was kind of putting the blame on him because I'm just thinking he's caught up in the moment. He finally found somebody that, you know, makes him feel like he's back in Smallville, basically. Mm-hmm. Makes him feel comfortable. Yeah. Shit he's never felt before. But... I will concede, Daniel, that right, but be- he does look like he's giving her a look right before she falls. Like, you good? You good? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right. So next, we've got. Does this movie get made now? I think this is an easy one because if who's those who don't know. They are coming out with a new Superman Superman movie, and James Gunn James Gunn James Gunn is at the helm, and so might be good. I mean, he's a great director and has a good vision for comic book movies. So, yeah, might be good. And he has a he has a brightness to his work that yeah. I think Superman desperately needs because I agree. the Snyderverse was so like. Grim, dark, and cool. And let's listen yeah. to Lincoln Park. <laughs> yeah, and again, I mean, this goes back to what we were talking about. That's fine for some comic book characters, aka right. Batman. But we don't need every single super book or superhero to face those kind of dilemmas. It's fine to have Superman fight evil in a different way. It doesn't always have to be a moral compass. It can sometimes involve grander schemes, and I just think that that dark internal fight isn't doesn't always have to be there, right? So, like in this case, I mean, his literal struggle was against his weakness or kryptonite, right? That mm-hmm. was what held him back. It wasn't an internal struggle; it was external. Somebody was bringing that on him, so we don't always need that dark. Zack Snyder, you know, it's for every character at least, right? And what 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 gets me so riled up about like Dark or the the Man of Steel is that he doesn't immediately take the fight away from Metropolis. He fights right. through Metropolis. He causes <laughs> all this damage. He doesn't try and save anybody. Like yeah. that's Superman. Superman saves people first, fights the bad guy second. Right. right, he's bound by his principles. Yeah, and he's not just kryptonite. <laughs> exactly. Well, here's the other question. So in that movie, it's Kevin Costner that says, like, you or he, Superman asks him, or Clark Kent asks him if he should save those people, and he was like, "I'd rather you not be known." Yeah, and in the original movie. The dad wasn't like that. I mean, he was he didn't want them he didn't want to show off, but he also says you're here for a reason. And there's one thing I do know, son, and that is you are here for a reason. And so he he has that little dialogue right before he dies. And it's <laughs> it's just more about how like, you know, as he's gotten older, he's realized that Superman's here for a reason and you you can be showy and you can 
find out. So I like the dad in this a lot more than Kevin Costner, which I like Kevin Costner as an actor more. Right. But but that's not what I'm talking about. And it's a character I really, yeah. really liked uh, Mr. Kent. Yeah, Pop yeah, because he's like, first thing we got to do is find that boy's proper family. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was a real dad feeling. Like, he wasn't over the top. I liked how he died. As like, Not that I liked that he died, but I liked <laughs> for how he died. But I liked that he died in a subtle way. It wasn't some big showy tornado. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't need that. For, again, I don't Ooh. need that for everything. Stay there. Let me die, even though you could <laughs> run and save me. Do, don't do it. Exactly. Don't do it, boy. Uh, right. Exactly. Uh, I I didn't need that. I just yeah. I'm good yeah. with a, a subtle heart yeah. attack, real real stuff going on. They like, died having like a foot race. He's like, race your paw. Yeah. Stop. Like, shit, <laughs> that sucks. Like, yeah. that's, that's real life. Yeah. For me, for me, uh, like watching this movie again made me realize, like. Boy, I really do not like that Man of Steel, like, grim yeah, dark Superman at all. Dude, I never really thought much of it. Like, I was like, okay, it's not a bad movie. But then I saw this, and I'm like, oh, this is what I should enjoy. Yeah. You know, this, like, this makes sense. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And then there's Superman Returns, which is just more of, like, a love letter to the original. I mean, it's almost right. identical. Right. Like, it's, the way it's... it's it's supposed to be in this Donner verse. Exactly. Which yeah. I think too I think much time had just passed. Some of those voice Agreed. clips of uh, fucking The Godfather. Yeah. Yeah. It was, but like that one still had stuff that like made me go, like, yeah, that's still a Superman movie, though. I thought yeah, it was oh. pretty boring. But like, it was there's a scene boring. where like there's glass falling down, and Superman goes flying by it, and then he turns and shoots his heat vision back to mm. evaporate the glass so it doesn't mm-hmm. fall on the civilians below. And it's like Superman yeah. saving yeah. people. <laughs> I actually like that one. To be totally honest, I like Kevin Spacey a lot more than Jesse Eisenberg. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I thought Spacey did a good job in that. I thought. Overall, it was better than the Man of Steel. Yeah, I'll give it but that you're, for sure. But you're right; it's kind of boring. Yeah. It's like not a lot happens. It's a little slow. I liked. Oh, the other thing I didn't like was the like weird montage. We're in prime montage era. I mean, Rocky came out two years prior, <laughs> and that's the montage we get for Superman saving people. Like he saves a cat and a tree. <laughs> You come down from there. Come on. It's all right. Here you go, miss. Gee, thanks, mister. <laughs> That's nitpicking, but your entire but call plane out. exploded so you could save a cat. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that he saves the cat. <laughs> I don't because hate it. <laughs> because that is Superman. He's just a good guy. Like it's a little he thing. sees this no, girl crying, and like just yeah, he yeah. has the powers. He can easily do it. Like I mean, what I didn't like is the implied child abuse that happens right after. Oh where yeah, she walks <laughs> right. inside and she's like, "A man flew down and gave me my kitty. I thought I told you to stop lying." And then you hear an audible smack. It's like, oh, come on. <laughs> come Unnecessary. on, Superman, where are you? <laughs> now, in 78, that was probably like a, oh, 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 oh that's funny. Because, oh. you know, the 70s were full of grim dark. <laughs> I didn't, they didn't even oh, yeah. Seen. All right, next category, we've got favorite line from the movie. So I'll go first. I my favorite scene is when you first see the Superman or the the reveal of Superman. He comes out of nowhere, and that dude goes, "Say him, that's a bad outfit." Oh yeah. <laughs> Say him, boom. Excuse me. That's a bad outfit. Yeah. 
<laughs> he like, I'm he like, like spins around in the yeah. Daily Planet like rota- revolving door and comes out wearing yep. the cape and the suit. Yeah. Yep. And he just flies up and I he, guess like looks at a telephone outfit. booth and then yes. moves on and it's like sort of a joke a nod. he normally uses a telephone booth. <laughs> Yeah, so that was absolutely a, a little nod to the comics, him looking at the telephone booth. Daniel, what was your favorite line? Uh, mine is, fainted? You fainted? Uh, what happened? Well, I guess I must have fainted. Fainted? You fainted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then, you know, because Clark faints to catch that bullet. And right. then, you know, she... Gives Lois gives him a hard time, and then he opens his hand, and the bullet's in his palm, and he just sort of tosses it away, and away they go. <laughs> yeah, that was cool, John. Um, Lois saying, "Any more at home like you?" Oh, <laughs> yeah. Says, no, not really, because what I thought about is his home planet of Krypton. No, <laughs> the right. last one. Any more at home like you? Uh, not really, no. I, I didn't think so. <laughs> yeah, literally. I liked, I liked when he also says, and this ties back to the comics, when he, he's like, I'm here to fight for the truth, justice, and the American way. It's like, oh, there it is. I mean, uh, why are you here? There must be a reason for you to be here. Yes, mm-hmm. I'm here to fight for truth and justice and the American way. Yep. Waiting waiting mm-hmm. for it. Uh, <laughs> another works. line that got me was uh Do you like pink? Do you like pink? I like pink very much, Lois. <laughs> oh, when yeah. she's when they're flirting with each other when he's Superman and, and he goes, uh pink. Yeah. And then, <laughs> oh, do you like pink? Oh, I, I think that's, again, I think that scene is so charming. They're so adorable together. Like, I, I, I love when the whole x-ray <laughs> kind of broke. I mean, the whole, yeah, when she's like, how big, or how big are you? <laughs> I mean, yeah. how tall are you? <laughs> and how big are you? How tall are you? It's so, like, innocent and cute. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not, like, over the top. I don't even know what all it means back then. I don't know what they were insinuating. So some of it was probably that, and some of it's probably just again innocence. So like, yeah, I have. It, I I thought it was such a cool scene. Yeah, it's so great because Lois is such a you know confident, competent person, and then yeah. she gets around Superman and's like, duh, uh, she's duh. the damsel in distress. <laughs> yeah, isn't that crazy? But it's like she's Clark. like Clark, exactly. where Clark is like Clark you know, is kind of Lois at that yeah, point. Right. Clark is like, uh. which I don't think I've ever put together until us just kind of talking that in, into existence. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's Weird. Lois and Clark is is a great dynamic, and it's yeah, it's great when they first start. It's great when they get together and like Clark lets her in on the Superman. Yeah. Like, like it's just one of the greatest fictional pairings, like famous fictional yeah. pairings. Again, I, think I don't think there's a better comic book. One. Said something like basically she leads Superman into trouble. <laughs> so it's like, she's always like chasing the story and he's like, Oh right. gosh, <laughs> she just <laughs> right. fucking set off the bomb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. All right, next category we've got most likely to be off-screen drunk. Um, John, what do you, who do you got? Otis. Yeah. Otis. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck up. Clean sweep. Yeah, yeah. that one's Otis. Yeah. I mean, he gets bullied the entire movie. Of course <laughs> he's going home and drinking. It's a little bitty place. Otisburg? Okay, I just wipe it off. That's all. It's a little town. <laughs> yeah. And he just seems uh, like the sort of guy who would who would drink from a bottle, too. Like, yeah, it, yeah, absolutely. It, he's definitely a townie, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
he's gonna he's gonna get the not the full bottle, but like one of those. I don't know what you call them. Traveler bottles. Yeah, one of those. Like they look like a flask, but it's yeah, just the he, bottle that it comes he in. Actually- Smashes one right before he goes into the little hideout before they Does kill. Does he really? Yeah, oh, that's he hilarious. Like, well, perfect. Uh, yeah. He's got like the paper for Luther. He smashes it, puts it in his pocket, and then right after that, you know, uh, Luther's condescending to him, and he's like, "Why am I not reading this yet? Because <laughs> I haven't given it to you, Mister Luther." <laughs> <laughs> So, did you know Warren Beatty and Ned Beatty are actually not related? No, I just assumed they were. <laughs> well, they're born in the same year, same last wow. name, and they're in the same profession, and they actually kind of look similar, but they are actually not related. Hmm. Now we get to cast their friends. Daniel, you got anybody on this one? Yeah, I've got four. All right. Uh, I have Clark Kent, and that's me, a big clumsy oaf, lovable <laughs> heart of gold, but, you know, I'm running into stuff constantly, like, I'll slip and fall, you know, no matter what. Uh, for Superman, I have you, Matt. Ba, ba, ba. Body of an Adonis. You know, you don't like you don't like people getting picked on unless it's you picking on Kevin. That's fair. Uh, <laughs> That's pretty fair. Is yeah. Kevin Otis? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, you try and stand up for what you think is right. You know, you're you're a good guy, and like you're also you know a lot stronger than me. So yeah, <laughs> Superman. All right, I'll take it. Sweet. And then for Perry White, I have Dave because he's always angry, <laughs> but he's a good, like a good person. He wants the best for everyone. Dave's a good, good person. He's just a little crabby. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, who is that character though? Perry Perry White. White he's the uh, editor in chief of okay. the Daily. Plan. I thought so. He's you know. While there's that whole dog whistle scene, which mm-hmm. was a contender for my song score sound. Oh, even though, yeah. But uh, he's like trying to fucking fire him up. He's like, you gotta, he's like, he's like, you're missing something, Kent. And he's like, humility? <laughs> he's like, no. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. Tell him to like get some balls and go for it. Right. <laughs> right, he's trying to light the fire under him the whole time, yeah. and he's just like, uh, and then uh, naturally, uh, that brings us to Jimmy Olsen. And for Jimmy Olsen, I have our boy Johnny, <laughs> that's what I had to be- because he's enthusiastic and he wants to be there, and he's your pal, but sometimes he's gonna do something stupid and get himself falling off a dam. <laughs> I I also said John f- just because of the silliness and just being that good buddy friend. <laughs> I'm trying to get a good shot. Ah, no. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Sean, did you have anybody? Well, I just had that late epiphany of Kevin being Otis because he is the butt of a lot of our jokes. I said However, that too. I had him. I had Otis. Previously cast as Superman, which I meant to be the combination of Clark Kent and <laughs> Superman, because he, he is principled and he gets stuck in his principles quite a bit. Uh, like fair. Lex Luthor does to him. He's like, Oh, yeah, I knew if I told you a lie about poison gas, you'd come running. <laughs> um, That's fair. And Lex Luthor clearly has got to be. Our evil genius, XCS Coder. Cody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Taking over the world. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I had both. So I had Kevin as Otis because he's always being bossed around or we're, we're ripping on him. So I also <laughs> said that. I had Cody as Lex Luthor because he would name a country or a place after him and 
try to take over the world with real estate <laughs> or four different places. <laughs> I had John as Otis for or John as um, Jimmy Olsen for being goofy and silly. And that's all I had. Let's do our podium rolls for any of the top build cast members. So for our main man, Superman, duh. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Absolutely. He, again, he didn't really go on to do much other than this. A bunch of TV movies. He is Superman. Christopher Reeve is Superman. So no question. Yep. Unfortunately, he fell off a horse and broke his neck. And, and uh, a few years later. <laughs> yeah. Well, he uh, lived several years after that. Um, yeah, so but did he, eventually die, probably sooner than he would have if he hadn't have had that accident. Yeah, he had a heart attack at the age of 51, 52. Mm -hmm. I'll throw out there that when he did die, we were in high school. I stayed after school with Alex Wolfert to paint The Rock uh, in tribute to him. <laughs> really? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, we have Margot Kidder. As our girl, Lois Lane, I would say yes. Yeah. Again. So I looked at her IMDb, and she's got a pretty long list. A lot of movies I've never heard of. She, However, she also on her podium would be the original Amityville horror movie. Oh, nice. And for those who remember the cartoon Captain Planet, she was the voice of Gaia. Oh, was she? Okay. Who is Gaia like the leader? Guys, yeah, Gaia's is like, he like the, Zordon? the ethnically ambiguous um, Mother Earth character. Okay. All right. Next we have Marlon Brando. I'm gonna say no. Nah. <laughs> no. Not, Not for close. Brando. No. I mean he killed it, and I'm fucking yeah, he's great. grateful he was in this movie. But yeah, nah. he does his part, obviously. But mm -hmm. yeah, no. I mean he's got his top three are probably Apocalypse Now, The Godfather, and On the Waterfront. Those are the, the three hit superstar roles. I mean, again, this guy has a bunch of movies under his belt. But to be fair, he's not got a lot of FaceTime in Apocalypse Now. No, he doesn't. Kind of like this Godfather. Movie, though, yeah, I was going to say kind of like this movie. But obviously in The Godfather, he is Don Corleone. Yeah, that is uh, probably, I mean, that's the one I know of him, but he's before our time, so he's probably done a whole bunch of shit that we might not well, even be familiar with. Well, so on the waterfront, you know the the quote, I could have been a contender? That's from yeah. on the waterfront. That's him. <laughs> All right, next we've got Ned Beatty. I said yes. Sure. Yeah. Well, I was, you weren't on here yet, but the only other movie I can think of him in is not a very glamorous role. What's that? Oh, uh, Deliverance. Oh, yeah, of course. So I was going to say Deliverance is one of them. It's this and probably Network. Oh. Which he, he won Best Supporting Actor in Network. Yeah, I was honestly disappointed with that movie. Cause like it deals okay. with shit that I'm like down with, and then I was, yeah. I, I, I think I was kind of overhyped on it, but it it's okay. Is that like a lot of people do like that? I would say that. Now I did want to give a shout out. I was gonna, ho I was hoping you would say the movie He Got Game. Do you remember him as the warden in that? No. So mm -hmm. when Denzel has to. Well, when he goes and he's facing a, a deal, the warden tries to get him to get Ray Allen or his son to sign with another team or sign with a college. The warden is is Ned Beatty. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so last, I, I'll throw in there uh, is obviously our Lex Luthor, Gene Hackman. And I said no. No, but I think he kills it as. I think well, he's he, great. He does a great job, but I agree with you that it's probably not one of his best roles. Yeah, I mean, I like I like how quirky he is. I, I know I mentioned it before, but he's 
he's he's Lex Luthor at face value. No, I like. I I personally like the Lex Luthor that's running for president or is president as as you know we've been looking at. I like <laughs> that Luthor more so than I like the one trying to just be a realtor in a sense. <laughs> but I think it works because the rest of this movie is corny. And so I think his character is no less and so I'm fine with it. And I I do think he's great in it, but you know, he's yeah. he's good at what he's given. Well, and that's the thing about this. Um, again, this is before Crisis on Infinite Earths. So right. this yeah, Lex Luthor was just a, yep. you know, mad scientist. It wasn't until after <laughs> Crisis on Infinite Earths when he became the businessman who ran all of Metropolis and also hated Superman. That's the- Right, and that that gives you the real, genuine sense of real power. Mm-hmm. Is the and I also power. have the feeling that we haven't seen the last of Lex Luthor. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, I wonder why. And <laughs> so I, I just wanted to say or throw out the movies that are probably on his list, and it's got to be French Connection because he won Best Actor for that. I'll throw in Hoosiers for myself. And then I'll I'll go and ahead and say my third for him was Royal Tenenbaums. I'll throw another one That's out Royal. there. His that I really like is the Quick and the Dead. Oh, he's so good in that. Oh, good call. I forgot about yeah, that. The real bad dude. <laughs> he's so good and and unforgiven. He's the villain. Not too. saying I mean that's just a personal favorite of mine, but yeah. Well, he's done he's, a lot of good work, including yeah. this. I mean, he's the villain in Unforgiven, and it's pretty much the same role as Quick and the Dead. Oh, <laughs> owns the town. Similar. Yeah, I mean, similar. Do you have any other roles, Daniel, for Gene Hatman that you wanted to no, shout not, out? I, I mean, I'm looking at him right now, but nothing that um, goes over anything you've already said. I mean, French Connection came out in, like, 73, and it really launched his career. I mean, that's no question his top. All right. Last category we've got, does this movie podium in the year 1978? All right, John, does this movie podium? Yes. Nice. And where, what's your list for me? I'll put it at the top of my 78 podium. Nice. What else you got? Um, number. I'll start with number two. Greece. Um, nice. I've seen a lot. I know all the songs. Um, it's kind of, sort of, like, uh, melded with me. Uh, number mm-hmm. three, Halloween. Nice. I have a feeling we'll have a similar list, uh, Daniel. Yeah. Uh, mine is almost identical. It is <laughs> Grease at number three, it is Halloween at number two, and it is Superman at number two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be the only one to throw a little wrench in there, but not too big of a wrench. So my number three is my wrench, and I said, up in smoke. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> My mom showed me that movie when I was like 11 years old. And I had no idea <laughs> the humor that I would enjoy later on in life. <laughs> Before I get into my other two, I just wanted to say that The Deer Hunter won Best Picture that year, which yeah. is a really long and messed up movie about war and the afterlife of war. And boy, it's messed up. Yeah, I've um, seen that as long as I can remember is like a top movie and I'm like, Oh boy, I've never taken that one on. I have. And it is heavy. It's long, <laughs> heavy. It's, it's out. And then there's obviously like you guys said, Halloween and, and Dawn of the dead also came out in mm-hmm. 78. I went with number two, Superman. I absolutely, I, obviously supplanted anything else because I haven't seen it before and now I have, yeah. but it definitely is awesome. I really, really had a good time. Like it was, 
it was more than just a, I, me watching a movie. Like I enjoyed myself. And I, I know we were talking off air about how it's a really comforting movie. And mm-hmm. I get that sense with a lot of older movies now that I'm seeing it. It's a lot of times what I'm, I'm feeling now is, is that a lot of the older movies have a lot of a genuine connection with the characters. I, I see like the, I mean, how well, Margot Kidder and Christopher Reeve gel in this. Yeah, like, those that things really is resonate. Outstanding. Yeah, and not, and not one time I'm like, oh, that guy's not like. <clears throat> it's so good. I that's one thing I like in movies, and some for some reason back in the '70s, I mean, if at least it really feels like that. And then we kind of get into the cartoon area of the '80s, and that kind of goes away, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You get into yeah, like I mean, back you to still the... get it. You still get it in some movies, like Back to the Future. I think, like the chemistry between Doc and Marty is like, oh yeah, yeah. But that's I meant guy girl chemistry. Oh, 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 okay. And I was going to use that as a bad example, because or a good example in my argument, because there's no chemistry with her and him. <laughs> <laughs> With Marty. No, because she's only in the she's only Jennifer. in the script like for three days or right. three so, seconds. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, that's Most of the too. time you're knocked out, but this whole movie revolves around the life you've all had together. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then so my number one was Greece. So number one. Yeah. It, I mean What put it at number one for you? I would say the mute the songs. And mm-hmm. it's definitely the one I've seen the most. So it's the one I know the best. And so it was just an easy answer. I, I definitely know that movie. Like I noticed a lot hand. of uh, nostalgia for the time period, of course, in Greece, because it's set there. But also in Superman, there's like an homage or ode to like, oh, the way it was back when in like, you know, small town America. All right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in to our show. Please like and subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also follow us on our favorite social media platforms or our website, themoviepodium.net. Um, this was a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed Superman, and I definitely want to do more movies where we just say, hey, whoever wants to watch a movie, let's come and do it. And just yeah. pick one. Pick a fun movie and let's do it. Oh, yeah. Lord. Always down. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Later. Later. Hey, man. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs>